Looking for something that you can whip up in your big horn pizza oven alongside of your pizzas at your next rager? Well, let's go, because we're making chicken wings. Now, when it comes to cooking chicken wings in the big horn, I'm gonna assume that you're in one of two camps. Camp number one being, I got all the time in the world. I want these wings to be as crispy as possible and impart the most hardwood flavor. And then there's camp two, which doesn't want to have to stress about whether the chicken's cooked all the way at the party and needs something that can heat up just about as quickly as they can make a pizza so they can keep the snacks coming. So the first method we're gonna be whipping up today is gonna to be the super quick ones. And they're super quick because they're already pre-cooked. We're gonna steam off our party wings inside a steamer. I got one of these old school analog OG gangster Instapots from back in the day. If you ever see one of these in a thrift store, pick it up because it's no nonsense. And I've had it for about seven years and it works like a charm. We're gonna load these into the top basket of our steamer and we're gonna steam them for 15 minutes. This will par cook them and then we're gonna finish them up and get them nice and crispy and reheated at the party. We wanna use fresh chicken wings for this recipe. Okay, well maybe not that fresh, but you definitely wanna use fresh chicken wings because the texture is gonna be a lot better. The skin is gonna get crispier. When you get the frozen ones, they got some kind of like saline solution pumped in them. They come out really nice in the fryer, but they're not gonna come out the same in the big horn. While the wings are cooking, we're gonna go ahead and get the big horn lit off. Today we're gonna be cooking these with some cherry wood. It just happens to be what I have. I also got some of those royal oak pellets, which are really cool, but I'd like to get that wood flavor on here. Let me know what kind of woods y'all are cooking with in the big horn down in the comments below. Something I've been doing lately, just kind of out of necessity, because I lost my little tool, and just convenience and safety, is I've been actually using my torch to just light the pellets right in the back of the grill like this. And then when they get lit, I just slide the drawer and that way I don't have to let them burn on the tabletop for a minute and a half and then transport them across the yard. I've also been leaving the back door open too until the pellets get lit. I think it helps them uh, get started off a little bit more even and less chance of them smothering and smoking out the backyard. After you've steamed your chicken wings for the 15 minutes, if you're doing this the day before your party, you can take them out of the steamer and put them onto a flat tray and let them cool in your refrigerator. Once they're cooled down all the way, then you can put them in a Ziploc bag. When I put them in the Ziploc bag, I like to toss them in a little bit of olive oil and a little bit of this Kinder's Blend seasoning. But if you have another oil or seasoning you like using, do what you do. All right, I can't worry about temping out chicken half a rosé deep. I need my chicken wings now recipe is super simple. We're just gonna load these puppies onto our tray, put them in the big horn for four to five minutes, rotating them halfway through. Don't gotta get the bottom of the oven to surface of the sun type temperatures for this recipe. So if you're just making the wings and not making a pizza, a 20 minute preheat is gonna be just fine. Let's take a second to talk about the pan that we're using for this. I have a little eight x eight brownie pan and it works out really nice. One of the limitations of the Bighorn Pizza Oven and making the chicken wings is you're really not gonna be able to make that many at once. You could use a little bit bigger skillet. I was just using what I happened to have on hand. Whatever you do, just make sure you do not use a Teflon pan in the big horn because it'll cook off that Teflon and release some toxic gases and fumes and stuff all over your food. So please don't do that. I just used this brownie pan right here and pretty much annihilated it the first time I made wings in it. Hey, have you ever totally destroyed something using it for what it's not? intended to be used for and then from then on out it became your roll dog for that purpose let me know comment charge it to the game down in the comments now we just gotta hit him with that sauce and get him to your mama one of my all-time favorite sauces for chicken wings is hot garlic it's basically just buffalo sauce with a bunch of garlic in it i whip it up 
using four tablespoons of butter, microwave it to melt the butter, and then I whisk in two tablespoons of garlic powder. After you get the garlic powder combined, then I add a half a cup of Xanaray's hot sauce. You could use Frank's or whatever other hot sauce you like. If it's a little too spicy for you, just remove one tablespoon of hot sauce and add one tablespoon of butter. If it's not hot enough, do one less tablespoon butter and one more tablespoon of hot sauce. For our I got all the time in the world chicken wings, we're gonna kind of prepare them a little bit like we did our pre-steamed ones. We're gonna put them in a bowl, coat them in olive oil, and coat them in some of that Kinder's blend. Toss them around with the tongs. Make sure you always have your tongs closed when you're spinning chicken wings. That way you don't go chewing them up. Also be generous with the seasoning. If you're using seasoning and your food's bland, because you ain't using enough. Oven's been preheated for about 20 minutes, so we're ready to cook our raw chicken wings. Be careful, guys. You don't want to get everyone sick at the party. Make sure you got a separate bowl and tongs ready to receive your fully cooked wings. That way you don't get any cross-contamination between the raw chicken and the cooked chicken. Also, for this, you're going to want to have one of these little thermometers so that way we can check the meat and make sure it is cooked all the way. All right, with our chicken wings in, we're gonna set a timer for 10 minutes and we're gonna rotate them about every two and a half minutes, one quarter of a turn. That way we get a nice, even crispy skin. If we find that the ones in the back by the firebox are cooking a little quicker, getting a little charred up, just flip that pan around 180. We are just about coming up on 10 minutes now. We're gonna go ahead and pull this chicken out and check the temperature to make sure that it's cooked. We're looking for 165 degrees Fahrenheit. This 10 minutes is more or less just like a guide. Please always make sure your chicken temps out to 165 before serving it to your guest. Tempt this meat out proper, we wanna go ahead and stick our thermometer into the thickest part of the chicken, which for the most part on party wings is gonna be one of the drummies. Just make sure you're not touching a bone. And you can see we've clearly passed 165, which is good. Because when you're temping meat out, you wanna get it up above 165 and it, has to hold there for about 15 to 30 seconds too. So just another thing to keep in mind, but we're at like 190. So these things are ready to go. Now all we got to do is get them in a bowl and spin them with our sauce. I like serving everything up inside these cheap and easy little carnival type paper trays. You can pick these up at a restaurant supply shop or online anywhere. They're really nice. They don't take up a lot of room in the trash and you can burn through a ton of them prepping up the food at your party and not have to worry about dishes. Just the manje and the beve. Thanks for coming out to the yard and whipping up these wings with me guys. Really appreciate all the feedback in the comments. Keep it coming. Let me know what you all want to see. This is Jason signing off. See you next time. Peace. Yeah, that's fall off the bone right there. <laughs>